got a couple word problems here we're going to look at. And the goal of this lesson is we're going to be able to write an equation for these word problems in terms of write a linear equation and also talk about what is, you know, the x and y and what does slope represent and stuff like that. So first question says, or problem says, Kirby had a party and ordered five pizzas, then had them delivered by Grubhub. And the total cost for this was $43. A few days later, Kent had a party and ordered nine pizzas, had them delivered by Grubhub, and the total for his order was $73. So the first part says, write an equation for the cost of pizzas with delivery from Grubhub. So first thing we need to do is we need to kind of decipher what are our X and Y? And it says Kirby had a party and ordered five pizzas, had them delivered by Grubhub, and the total cost was $43 for those five pizzas. And then Kent ordered nine pizzas, and his total cost was $73. So what we're going to do is we're going to create two points. We're going to, I'll try to color coordinate these five pizzas at $43, and then nine pizzas at $73. So what we'll do is we'll say that the X is going to be the number of pizzas ordered, and the Y is going to be the price. And the reason why we want X to be the pizzas ordered is because the price increases every time we order a pizza. So we call that the, the independent variables, the pizzas. That's the one that you can say, if I order 10 pizzas, that will adjust the price. The price doesn't necessarily affect how many pizzas. The number of pizzas affects the price. OK, so we've got two points. What we're going to do is we're going to write an equation. And so first, we need to figure out the slope. And to find the slope, we do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And so on the, for the y2 and y1, uh, y2 is going to be 73. And then y1 is going to be 43. We'll try to color coordinate these. And then x2 is 9. And then x1 is 5. So my slope for this is going to be 73 minus 43, which is 30. And then 9 minus 5 is 4. So that's a 30, not a 36. And then 30 divided by 4 is 7.5. So uh, to write an equation, we're going to have y minus y1, which is 43 equals the slope 7.5 times x minus x1, which is 5. So this is just the point slope form of a line. And then what we can do is we can distribute this 7.5 in here. And so I'll rewrite it. We get y minus 43 equals 7.5x minus 7.5 times 5, which is 37.5. You can just use a calculator to figure that out, or you could probably do it without a calculator if you think about it. And then I'm going to add 43 to both sides. And then what I get is I get y equals 7.5x. And then negative 37 plus 43 gives me positive 5.5. Now, I did not say when I specified this to write an equation in slope-intercept form, but you'll see later on why that's important. But if you're just given the task to write an equation that models this situation, this would be just fine up here. y minus 43 equals the slope times x minus 5. Okay, so we kind of already answered part B. What do X and Y represent? X represents, represents the number of pizzas ordered. Okay. 
and y represents the total cost. Represents the total cost. Now, uh, one thing that you should probably get in the habit of, of doing is not just saying x pizzas y cost. Be more descriptive. Say represents the number of pizzas ordered. Uh, x isn't necessarily pizzas. It's how many pizzas were ordered. And y doesn't represent just dollars. It represents the total cost for the situation. Okay, and then part C. What do the slope and y-intercept represent? So we'll slide over to this next page. And just a reminder, this was y equals 7 point, ooh, let's try that again, 7.5x plus 5.5. So what's happening here? 7.5 is going to multiply by the x. So x is pizzas. So for each pizza, additional pizza we order, the price goes up by $7.50. That's what that's telling us. So the slope for each additional pizza order the price total cost, I should say, that's what we said, the total cost increases increases by seven dollars and fifty cents and then the y-intercept is what does that plus 5.5 mean well think about this what if we ordered zero pizzas that means that x would be zero so what is that 5.5 why, why are we paying that well that's the grubhub delivery fee the y-intercept is the Grubhub delivery fee. Oops. All right. And then part D. If you bought 10 pizzas the next time using Grubhub, how much would your 10 pizzas cost with delivery? Well, pizzas is X. And so we're just going to plug that in for X. We've got Y equals 7.5 times 10 plus 5.5. So 7.5 times 10, 75, plus 5.5, which is 80.5. So it would cost $80.50 for 10 pizzas using Grubhub. All right, so that's the first example. Pretty straightforward pizza example. Let's look at one more example here. It says Anna took two math tests. On the first test, she studied for 30 minutes and scored an 82%. On the second test, she studied for two hours and scored a 94%. Write an equation to model Anna's test scores based on the amount of time studied. So what's affecting what? If she studies more, her test scores increase. So the independent variable is how much she studies. So she studied for 30 minutes and two hours. X is going to represent time studied. So then y will represent the test score. So I guess I'm kind of jumping the gun here. That's the answer for those there. So I really see two points. I see a 30 comma 82. And then my other point is not two for two hours, it would actually be 120 because it's 120 minutes. We gotta be consistent. This one's in minutes and then the other one's in hours, so we'll convert it to hours. So 120 comma 94. All right, so writing an equation, we've got, well, let's start with the slope like we did before. The slope is gonna be, 94 minus 82 over 120 minus 30. So that gives me 12 over 90. And let's see, those are both divisible by 6. So we get 2 over 15. So my slope is 2 fifteenths. 
All right, so my equation is going to be y minus y1, which is 82, equals the slope, which is 2 fifteenths, and then x minus uh, x1, which is 30. Okay, so we've got an equation. We're good to go here, but I am going to put it into slope-intercept form because they're, they're going to ask us in the next question, what do the slope and y-intercept represent? So it'd be nice to kind of get a sense of what that represents. So I'm going to distribute this 2 fifteenths in, and I get y minus 82 equals 2 fifteenths x, and then minus 30 times 2 fifteenths. Well, if you notice here, 30 divided by 15 is just 2. So 2 times 2, that's just 4. So this ends up being y minus 82 equals 2 fifteenths x minus 4. 30 divided by 15 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. And then I'm going to add 82 to both sides. And so I will just rewrite this down here. Y equals, if I add 82, I get 2 fifteenths X. And then plus 82, plus 82, I get 78, plus 78. Okay, so let's answer, what do the slope and Y intercept represent, represent in this situation? So here, the slope is going to represent, and we have a, a 2 on top and a 15 on bottom. So we need to say, what does the 2 mean in relation to the 15? So as Anna increases, oops, increase starts with an I, increases her study time. By, and then I'm just going to put a blank. We'll talk about what goes in there. Minutes. Her test scores. Scores. Should do what? So as she increases her study time, her test scores should increase. Increase by blank. So let's fill in these blanks. Uh, by blank percent, I should say. Percent. So we talked about how Y is the test score and X is the time studied. And so remember the slope is Y over X. So that means her test scores should increase by 2%. The time study should increase by 15%. So as she increases her study time by 15 minutes, her test scores should increase by 2%. Well, that's the slope. What does the y, re y intercept represent? Well, that represents what if she didn't study at all? So if she didn't study at all, then she should expect a 78% on the test. So you could write that down if that's something you would like to write down. Once again, the y intercept represents. Uh, if she doesn't spend any time studying, she should anticipate getting a 78% on the test. Okay, so same scenario. It says if Anna would like to earn 100% on her next test, how many hours should she plan on studying? So that means she wants to plug in 100 for Y. Because that's how what she wants to get for her test score. X represents how much time she spent studying. Oops, that's 178, but just 78. All right, so I'm going to subtract 78. And I get 22 equals 2 fifteenths x. And typically to get rid of a fraction, what I'll do is I'll multiply by 15. So 15 times 20 is 300. So another 2 fifteenths would be 330. And that equals 2x. Now I'm going to divide by 2. And so I get x equals 165. So in order for Anna to, for Anna 
to earn a 100% on the next test. Test. And I'm purposely being a little bit wordy here to kind of model your good answering for you. For Anna to earn 100% on the next test, she should plan on studying for 165 minutes. You can maybe even put for at least 165 minutes, but uh, I should be more careful. It says if Anna would like to earn 100% on her next test, how many hours? So let's uh, let's fix that. Instead of 165 minutes, I'm going to change that to hours. So I'm just going to take 165 divided by 60, and that'll tell me how many hours, and that's 2.75. So she should plan on studying for at least, ooh, struggling writing today, 2.75 hours. And there you go. So there's a couple of different word problems. We talked about slope meaning, intercept meaning, and how to write some equations for those.